Hey, I'm here in front of the bank. Well, technically it's a credit union, not a bank, but that's kind of beside the point. Uh, I want to talk to you about percentages. The bank's a place where you find all kinds of percentages and have to have a good understanding of it. Now, sometimes the percentages you work with at a bank are uh, not whole number percentages, like 2% or 3% or 8%. Sometimes they're percents that involve fractions or decimals, like 2 and 3 quarter percent or 1.53%. And other times there are even fractional percents or decimal percents that are less than 1%. Like on a checking account, you might have an interest rate, a really low rate on a checking account where you don't make a whole lot of interest, something like 0.25% or a half percent. Now, how do we work with those kind of percentages? Uh, how, can we, how can we kind of represent that visually in our mind and, uh, and really understand what's going on? We're going to look at the, both those things right now. All right, looking at interest rates at the bank here. Now this particular bank, uh, like all other banks, offers a whole variety of products uh, for different uh, reasons. Uh, even though they do have all these variety of things, they sort of fall into two categories. Uh, you have, uh, the first category would have things like checking accounts, savings accounts, uh, registered retirement savings plans, tax-free savings accounts, and things like term deposits. All of those things are things where you are going into the bank and you're depositing some money with them. You are essentially loaning the bank money for a period of time and they are willing to pay you some interest in exchange for that. Now the other category of things, things like loans or lines of credit, which are another type of loan, your credit card or even a mortgage, a long-term loan on a house. All of those things are sort of the reverse. You're going into the bank and asking them to loan you some money, and in exchange for the bank loaning you some money, you're agreeing to pay them some interest as you pay it back. Now, all of these things have a variety of interest rates, and then as we look at the interest rates, we can, we can see uh, how banks make money in the first place, uh, and we're also gonna look at how you represent percentages visually. Now, looking at some of the interest rates that that bank website had on it, I took a few screenshots so that we can just focus in on a couple of the rates here. These are a couple of rates from some of their savings accounts. You have something called an easy save saving account and a high interest savings account. Now, I should point out to start with here, right now in the world, uh, for the past number of years, interest rates have been probably lower than they've ever been. These are pretty low numbers. Even though this one says high interest savings account, this is a pretty low number right, 1.2%. And this one up above here is an even lower amount, 0.50%, or you could write 0.5% because you don't need that second zero, or you could even write a half a percent. Now it's important to realize that when you say 0.5% or half a percent, you're talking about less than 1%. On this grid down here, if I was to represent 1%, that's 1%. If I'm going to represent half a percent, it's going to be less than one square. That much right there, more or less. Now, if you want to just emphasize this, what you could do is draw a square beside it, an enlargement, and do that, like so. And we can just show that this is an enlargement of this, right? This thing right here. And if you were to draw one nice, as straight as I can line down there, and then color this in, you can show that that's half the square shaded in. All right, so that's a way of showing it if it's not clear from your little picture how much you have there. All right, half a percent. Now if we want to do this other one here, let's uh, color code it a little bit. So that first one was blue. This is this, is this half a percent, 0.5 percent. Do the other one in pink here. Uh, if, if we're going to represent that, now this is 1.2 percent. This is a fractional percent where part of it's larger than uh, it's larger than 1%, but not by much. You have the whole number part, 1, and we're going to represent that by shading in 1 square for 1%. The 0.2%, that's a little bit harder to represent here, you could write that as 1 and 2 tenths, right? Because that's what 0.2 is. Or you could even write it in lower terms if you want. Instead of 2 tenths, you could call it 1 and 1 fifth percent. Now, if we're going to represent that, uh, on here, this fractional part, what we could do is, well, we could do the best we could to shade in kind of one-fifth of that square. But if we want to make it clear here, 
Probably the best way again is to draw an, a square beside it, an enlargement. So we'll do that just like this. Now that's a little bit smaller than my other one, but that's okay. So we can show that this, not that actually, this right here, that fractional square is right here. And if we want to show one fifth of a percent or 0.2%, we need to divide this into five pieces. So that's maybe harder to divide into five pieces. Uh, you got to just do your best to make five strips, maybe. No, I'm not going to make them all equal, but that's probably close enough to show what it is. We can assume that it's all the same, and then you can show that that's one fifth of a percent there. So it's one and one fifth percent, right? You have your whole number part, and you have your fractional part there. Now, before we move on to look at some other interest rates on other types of products they have, this is worth thinking about what this means. What this means here is, say you went to deposit $100 into the bank account. So if this whole thing, this whole grid here represents your $100 that you deposited, what they're willing to pay you for keeping your $100 is every year they're willing to pay you $1 and a fifth of a dollar or in other words a dollar and 20 cents right 1.2 percent means on every hundred you get 1.2 so on every hundred dollars you're gonna get a dollar twenty that's what they're willing to pay you for you loaning them your money and on this lower interest one here they're willing to pay you half a dollar for every hundred dollars per year that you that they have your money so that's only 50 cents right that's what that means now, some of the other things that we have here, some of the other products they have, uh, I took a screenshot of their mortgage rates right now. Now, they have different mortgage rates for uh, for long term. Now, this is where they're loaning you some money that you can use to buy your house. Now, maybe before we start representing them, something to realize is how these compare to the savings accounts up here. Savings accounts, remember, are where you're loaning the bank some money. They're willing to pay. They're willing to pay 1.2 percent on their high interest savings account. But if you go in to borrow some money to buy a house, they're going to charge you a lot more than that. Now, that's actually how banks make money. They charge more money when they loan it out than they pay when they take it in. All right. So they're taking money from some people borrowing it and paying them that interest rate and then they're loaning it out on things like mortgages and collecting this and then the difference is how they make some money anyways besides that you can have mortgage rates that are good for different lengths uh, different terms right so they have a bunch of things here starting from six months or one year all the way to ten years here that they're willing to give you this interest rate now usually on that again before we represent these things visually is the longer you want to, the longer that you, you agree to take this interest rate, the higher it's going to be. And there's a lot of reasons behind that that we won't get into right now. And this one's kind of an oddball. I don't know why that one's higher. The six month, the shortest one is higher than, you know, half the, the first ones here. But if we're going to represent one, let's start by representing this, uh, this highest one here. If we're going to represent 6.75%, 6.75%, 6.75%. You could also write that as 6 and 0.75 is three quarters. You could write that as six and three quarter percent. If you were going to represent six and three quarter percent, there's two parts to it, right? There's the six percent that we're going to represent here. There's six, six out of a hundred. And then if we're going to represent the three quarter percent, well, you have to kind of just represent this uh, this way. So there's about a half, and I need to do my my other quarter. So that's about three quarters there. And if I want to do an enlargement again, I can do that like so over here. And we'll do the same thing again where we're enlarging it and showing that this is over here. We can do some lines on this like that and split it into four pieces and shade in three of them. All right, so there's our three quarters. That just makes it a little clearer that it's three quarters of a percent, All right? And you do the same thing with all these other ones. But I think probably you get the idea here that you need to take some of the squares for the whole number part and then a part of one square for the fractional part. Now, just before we're done here, I want to show you one last thing, which is 
credit card rates. There's some credit card rates. Now you notice these are really high. Those are very high rates. When you're uh, using your credit card to uh, to purchase things and you don't pay it off at the end of every month, then they charge you these interest rates. If you use a credit card and you pay it off every month, whatever you buy, then they don't charge you any interest on it. It's only when you don't pay it off and then you've borrowed the money that they start charging you very high interest rates. If you want to represent, let's say, one of those, this 19.5, just as a last one to do here. Let's draw that one in green here, 19.5%. Or in other words, 19 and one half a percent. Well, we can represent that 19. This would be 19 squares. And then we have our 0.5%, this right here. If we're going to do our same thing, we need another square to enlarge it like that. And then we can show this one enlarged over here. Again, that one's easy because you can just do half. Divide it into two and then shade it in. Now one last thing before we finish this is talking about interest rates in general. People always call them interest rates. Interest rates? But really they should be called interest ratios. And the reason I say that is because you're, it's a comparison of two things that have the same units. You're talking about how many dollars you're going to pay back for a certain number of dollars that you've deposited or borrowed, right? You can bring dollars to dollars. It should be a ratio, not a rate, right? So if you, on your credit card here, with this 19.5%, if you, if you have $100 and you've bought something for $100 in your credit card and you don't pay it off at the end of the month, they're going to start charging you nineteen and a half dollars for every year that you haven't paid it back that's a lot of money right if this is your hundred dollars here you gotta pay on top of that an extra nineteen and a half dollars every year that you don't pay it back All right. now since you're comparing again dollars to dollars like your your interest is nineteen point five dollars nineteen fifty for your hundred dollars you're comparing things that have the same units, so it should be should be called an interest ratio. So maybe you can start telling people that as you're talking about these things. So that's representing percents visually, where the percent involves a fraction, right? So both percentages bigger than one that involve a fraction, like those, or these up here, or those that have those that are less than one, like the 0.5 percent we looked at. Percents less than one less than one square. Percents greater than one, some whole squares, and then part of a square. And that is it.